What we are looking at here, most importantly, and it's probably not exactly what you're thinking, we need to condition pads. Hey everybody, Ethan here with Standing Stone, and this one is all about how to prepare your dog for the hunting season. We did a video previously talking about the prerequisites, what your dog needs to be able to go hunting with you. And now that we have that established, what do we need to do to prep our dog to actually be ready to go? Hopefully you've already started this process as we are approaching hunting seasons very, very rapidly. But if you're waiting until the October, November timeframe for quail and pheasants, this is still plenty of time to get ready. What we are looking at here, most importantly, and it's probably not exactly what you're thinking, we need to condition pads. The number one thing that dogs need conditioned is pads. They can make up for a, lot, a lack of stamina, though stamina is gonna be really important. It is not the number one thing because if your dog's pads are not properly conditioned, wow, that was a lot of words there. If your dog's pads are not properly conditioned, they'll blow a pad, they'll get a blister, essentially, they'll blow that pad, and then they'll be out or very sore for seven to 10 days, maybe even two full weeks. And if you don't get a ton of opportunities or you're on a long trip, this is gonna happen straight away, just like us. As I don't prepare, I put on a new pair of boots, tromp the first full day, and then I've got giant blisters on my heels and everything else. That makes the rest of the trip miserable. It'd be the same for our dogs. So two things that are very, very important. One of which is running on different surfaces, okay? It's very normal to think, let's take my dog to some grass or some park somewhere to go run. That's great, but dirt and grass isn't very tough on their pads. Rocks are, concrete is. If you can find one of the two, this is gonna give you what you need to be able to help toughen your dog's pads. Now, concrete, here's, and the rock's the same. You need to be able to understand if you can't put your hand directly on it, it's probably too hot to put your dog's pads on them, okay? We don't wanna burn them, we just wanna give them the opportunity to be able to toughen. We specifically use roading because it applies a couple different things. One, we're conditioning pads because we have this nice, really long driveway to keep the dogs on that's a combination of rocks and sand. We utilize a harness. This harness is a roading specific harness. You can use about anything, but we found that these, available at Standing Stone Supply, are the best thing for not getting tangled up, staying kind of where they need to be, but I wouldn't recommend this if you wanna do extremely extended periods of actual pulling, okay? That would be if you're going to do maybe even cane across or if you wanna actually add some resistance to that with um, ski joring or, I probably said that wrong, but ski joring, ski joring, but, um, or if you're gonna hook them up to a sled or some type of cart like that, you would want a more pulling specific designed harness. But these roading harnesses work really well. They're very simple to put on. I'm gonna take this off here, but hey, interested in the birds flying around. It just goes over their head. This piece comes off the back and then we have some adjustment straps that you can set up here. You don't want this tight underneath their chest you want to be able to put your hand in there approximately. It just kind of needs to be in this zone. So just like that, the harness is set up and it's very, very difficult for this to get tangly, okay? So we use roading as a way to have a little bit of added resistance. It involves a little bit of conditioning, but the primary focus again is pad toughening, okay? The next thing that we're going to do for preparing dogs pads is um, we utilize a couple different products, but we bounce back and forth between this one. Um, Tough Foot is a really good one if you can get it. And all you do here after we get done roading is a couple sprays till their paw looks dampish. And this helps to toughen and condition their pads. And I really like the smell of it. So three to four sprays per pad, it's that simple. Those two things are going to be huge. Now, I wanna jump into showing you how we get started with this roading process if you're considering it. If you don't have access to a four-wheeler and a gravel 
um, driveway or something to that effect, you can actually get, we hear a lot of folks that do, get these roading harnesses from us and you can get setups for a bike and ride with your dog. Think about them pacing with you more than pulling for anything that's extended. And I mean extended being anything over a mile to a mile and a half. You want them to be pacing with you more than pulling, okay? So when we get started with this, okay, we're gonna hook it on our dog and just let them get used to um, pulling a little bit. Come on, okay. A minute or two of walking around. And the reason for that is pulling is a very, very fun behavior um, for dogs. The next thing here, I'm gonna go ahead and get him hooked up. Okay, come on. We have a bar that keeps the dog out away from the four-wheeler itself. And then our bar, um, attached to the bar, we have a bungee. This takes some of the stress off of him. And then two swivel snap clips. The swivels are important, so in case he decides to spin it all, he doesn't get all tangled up. Now. Once you have your dog ready like this, we're gonna start really, really, really slow. And I've even got the four-wheeler in low. And we'll putz off here and I'll show you what this looks like. All right, so a couple things that are important. That was just a little quick down and back. Um, the longer straighter zone that you have, the easier it is on the dog. Turning around can be a little confusing or difficult at times, but um, you could see some digging, some pulling out of him. After about a quarter to half a mile, they get into a good pace and you figure it out. Question you might be asking yourself is, if you have an ATV type vehicle, how fast are they going? Um, typically between eight and 10 miles an hour, but you've got to be very attentive because even there was a clip, I don't know if you'll see it or not, he kind of got distracted on a bug. We wouldn't want to zoom past him and then jerk him around or something like that and get him hurt. So it's all about focus, paying attention, building on a pacing type environment to toughen pads. It's all about time on those pads. Now, also, how long have we been doing this or when do we really prep and start this process? August one here, we spend usually building up one day a week, then two days a week, then three days a week to where we're getting about three days a week of just a mile. It's down and back on our driveway um, and then spraying every single day, not just the days that we rode, every single day with tough foot. So that's a, a one month process. And now here we are mid-September. We're into that category of still about three days a week they're doing it and we don't ever increase that distance. It's all about just, again, building some time on the pads. We're not utilizing this as our primary form of exercise. Now, you may have seen on some of our social platforms, we have been using out Fox masks and that's something we'll show in a different video, but we use free runs through the tall grasses where they've got, this is the time where you could run into some seed issues or grass on issues and we've struggled with it in the past. So. Um, we found that those out fox, out fox masks work pretty well, and we utilize that as their more primary. It'll be an hour loop or an hour spent running. We'll try and get those in a couple times a week or once a week um, to really build the conditioning game. But the rest of that can be made up once we spend the majority of the time in the field on our trips. The pads can't be toughened once we hit the field, once we hit that trip. They're just going to be blown out. So. Keep the pads tough. Put a little bit of emphasis on conditioning. Make sure that your dog is acclimated to whatever temperature you're gonna be hunting in. And then on top of all of those things, read your dog, pay attention to your dog, and take care of them when they're telling you, I'm too hot, I'm too tired. Don't push it any more than they're ready to take. Hope that helps, guys. Enjoy the season. This is Hex. He has uh, really enjoyed working through the, the series with you guys, and we're excited to show the last few pieces of his uh, process and then get him out into the field this fall. I'm the guy with the pink gun. This is Hex, as you know. We'll see you in the next one.